What is up, guys? It is the Blue Bloods here with our first Week 5 college football preview, and we're kicking it off with the game of the week, man. We got the number two Georgia Bulldogs hosting the number eight ranked Arkansas Razorbacks in Athens between the hedges, 11 a.m. Central Time kickoff live on ESPN. And right now the Bulldogs are an 18 and a half point favorite as I'm recording. I'm sure that could shift a little bit as we get to the uh, later latter part of this week. It's a gigantic matchup. It's college game day. It's the biggest SEC game in the season thus far, the first top 10 matchup of the season in the SEC. And for me, even though this spread is almost three touchdowns, this is going to have a long-lasting impact on the SEC championship race moving forward. So that's something to look out for. Also, man, so since this is our game of the week, I need y'all to smash the subscribe button and like the video and comment your score predictions below. If you pick the winner and the score perfectly, you know, hit it right on the head, you can win our fifty dollars game of the week game of the week giveaway. So make sure to like the video, subscribe, and comment your score below. That way, you can win that fifty dollars if you predict the winner and the score correct this weekend. But let's get right into it, man. Some of the storylines this weekend. Let's start with the Bulldogs. Four and zero. They come in, I guess, widely viewed as the number one threat to Alabama for the college football national title this season, and they have been absolutely running through their schedule these past few weeks. I mean, as much as Vandy has been atrocious recently, they they had they held them to under like 70 total yards and four first downs. It was it was an absolute domination. They embarrassed South Carolina. They did it to UAB and now that Clemson went they they got the win over Clemson week 1. So they've been running through this their whole schedule thus far. And they're doing it in dominant fashion, man. 42 points per game averaged by this offense while they're only allowing five points per game for the season, which is an outrageous mark. Kirby Smart has arguably his most talented team. They're starting to get a bit healthy. Tyke Smith should be back this weekend, maybe even Darnell Washington, and they're slowly getting back. Pickens is already rumored to return late in November, maybe even early December. So we'll see what happens with that. But they're slowly getting healthy and they're handling their business. And now they get to make another huge statement looking for their second top 10 win of the season. Now for the Razorbacks, man, talk about the ultimate Cinderella team, Cinderella story in college football this season, finding themselves in the top 10 guys. If I would have told you, in August, as we were doing our preseason talk, that Arkansas would be in the top 10 in the country by the end of September. You probably would have absolutely unsubscribed and never listened to our podcast again or show again. They are in the top 10 right now. They have a huge, they, they have their toughest matchup of the season thus far, and they're looking for their third top 15 win as they've already notched wins over Texas and Texas AM. And this team has used an old school smash mouth approach to overwhelm their opponents thus far this season. And of course, a big storyline is Sam Pittman heading back to Athens between the hedges to take on his old team where he was hired away by Arkansas for this head coaching job as he was the offensive line coach for the Bulldogs before uh, Matt Luke took over after him. And he's looking to make a huge statement this weekend. And for me, guys, I was talking to you know a, a, one of my friends uh, today about it. If Arkansas wins this game, what they could possibly be the number two ranked team in the country come Sunday night. That that is unheard of. They'll at least be top three. So I mean, you're talking about everything on the line here for the Razorbacks. Now, looking at the series, the Bulldogs are on a two game win streak in this series, but. The Razorbacks did win the last matchup back in Athens in 2010, and the Bulldogs lead the overall series 11 to 4 thus far. But let's get into our keys for the game, man. Let's start with Georgia, and it's easy for me. It's to keep this offense as balanced as it has been all season. Keep this Razorbacks defense on their heels. Do not allow yourself to become one dimensional because that will play directly in to Arkansas's game plan, especially if, if there's one thing you probably have to do in that is run the ball. If they can shut down the rushing attack, 
and put it all on JT Daniels and these wide receivers, this game's going to get extremely interesting because looking at these keys, the first thing you have to do is establish a rushing attack because Arkansas is such a run dominant team. You cannot allow them to control the pace of this game and limit your offensive possessions to only a handful. And on top of that, wear down your defense throughout the game because when it gets late in the game, you're going to want to have some fresh bodies on the field. And Georgia cannot allow Arkansas to dominate the time of possession and dominate the run game. So they're going to have to try to establish their own pace and, you know, kind of match that smash, that smash mouth pace. If Arkansas is going to come out and try to hit you in the mouth, Georgia needs to do it quicker and better than Arkansas early in this game, especially being at home. You know, I feel like Arkansas got a huge break with this game being at 11 a.m. But I've been, I've been to Georgia for a, a multiple games that that crowd is still going to show up even at 11 a.m. Don't don't let it fool you that you think that stadium is not going to be full. This is a top 10 matchup. And listen, I've been to uh, Sanford Stadium. That that place is going to be packed out. So don't worry about that. But the rushing attack really it could be a three headed monster this weekend for the Bulldogs. And this is going to be the toughest test for this Arkansas front seven, which has played pretty well over the first four games of the season, but the Bulldogs must keep the pressure on them. You look at Zamir White, you look at Kendall Milton, James Cook, all of them over 100 yards rushing, all of them over five yards per carry, and four rushing touchdowns between the three of them. They have to be dynamic, and what I want to see is this offense keep fresh bodies in the game and just slowly chip away at the depth of Arkansas because I don't think Arkansas can match the depth that Georgia has on defense. So if they can win the time of possession battle, it is a huge check mark advantage Georgia if they can establish this run game. The key though is to stick to the game plan. Even if you don't establish the, you know necessarily establish it early and you're only getting marginal yards here or there, stick with it. What you can't do is not have early success and just abandon the run com completely and put the entire game on JT Daniels. Aim to take the pressure off of Daniels, which which really and truly, as we've seen this season, allows the offense to open up and allows the Bulldogs and Daniels to take those deep shots against the back end of this Razorbacks defense, which leads me to the key in terms of this balance key for Georgia is JT Daniels is huge for this game. It's going to be a huge test for this passing attack. And honestly, they're going to be the biggest threat I think that Arkansas has seen this season and this matchup is going to be huge in determining who will win this weekend. Daniels had an, has had an outstanding season. He's shown why he was one of the most highly touted transfers out of USC, completed over 76% of his passes, almost 600 yards passing, five touchdowns, two interceptions, and that's in only three games of action as he set out the UAB game due to injury. But Daniels, the number one thing is Daniels has to avoid turnovers, Stay efficient, and he's got to try to test the back end of this Razorbacks defense. You you might not, you might not have major success, but you at least have to make an option and get them to worry about how they're going to stop you on the back end, and, and especially the deep threats. Uh, Mitchell and all those guys have to be a factor deep down the field. You cannot try to just keep throwing short because Arkansas's defense, as crazy as it sounds, is too good for that. Now, with the rushing attack going, it's going to open up the offense because off of play action, Daniels has been huge with over 74% of his passes being completed, almost 300 yards. Two of his touchdowns came off of play action, and his highest uh, uh, passing grade by Pro Football Focus comes off the play action compared to any other passing concept. So he can absolutely make something happen deep down the field if Arkansas has to load the box to stop the running game. Now, the Razorbacks defense, the key, the, the, what they've done over the first few weeks is, is really establishing their will, winning the line of scrimmage, and also just hitting the offense in the mouth and keeping them off balance. The Bulldogs cannot allow that to happen. If they can keep the balance in their offense and hit the Razorbacks before they can establish their momentum, that's the key to victory. Get this crowd into it early. Get Arkansas feeling uncomfortable in the moment. And that's how Georgia's going to win this game. Now, moving to the Razorbacks, it's obvious. I think anyone tuning into this preview knew exactly what the key is for Arkansas. They have to run the ball. Now, that's easier said than done because of this Georgia defense. 
but there's you can't just change up your whole identity. Running the football down everyone's throat, playing smash mouth football has gotten you to this point. Continue that. Impose your will on this Georgia defense, and that's that's your key to victory. It, it, it is. And luckily, KJ Jefferson is going to be available this weekend after a minor knee injury he kept him out of the late second half against AM. And also not really relevant to the run game, but Traylon Burks at wide receiver is also going to be available, according to Sam Pittman today at his press conference. Now, this team, same as Georgia, uses a committee approach to the running back position, and they're also going to look to keep fresh bodies in the game, which is going to be important because this front seven for Georgia has some elite depth. They have playmakers at every position, and so you're going to have to try to keep fresh bodies to try to wear them down. They're only allowing 66 yards on the ground per game. That cannot happen for Arkansas. you got to run for 150, 200 yards on this Georgia defense if you really honestly want a chance to win this game. And you cannot allow what happened to Clemson to happen to you. If they hold you to like – I mean, two-yard rushing is a little ridiculous, but if they hold you under 100 yards rushing, Arkansas is going to get the doors blown off this weekend. It all starts with uh, with with Traylon Smith, almost 300 yards rushing, three rushing touchdowns, and then Raheem Sanders and Dominique Johnson are the rotational guys. Both of those guys are are doing great work in their limited action. Sanders averaging almost five and a half yards per carry, and Johnson averaging a whopping seven yards per carry and three touchdowns in his limited in, in his limited action. So they have to establish a good rhythm, a good rotation and take advantage of this Georgia defense. They're going to have to be versatile in where they attack this Georgia defense. You can't be predictable, so you're going to have to establish to run up the middle, off the tackle, in the B gaps, on the outside. And also, being able to get your playmakers in space is very, very important. So I expect to see some very creative play calling in terms of what Bryles does with this offense. Now, the number one factor in the rushing attack, let's just be honest, is going to be K.J. Jefferson. His ability to make plays outside the pocket puts stress on the defense because they have to stay disciplined in the open field. He's big, he's athletic, and he can go make plays in opportune moments. When you look at him, he's averaging almost seven yards per carry, two touchdowns, and 230 yards rushing. Now, a lot of his yards uh, his yards come from scrambles. He's averaging like eight yards per carry on the quarterback scrambles. But they, they've actually done a very good job running up the middle with him, in which he's averaging 13 yards per carry up the A-gap on design runs. Georgia cannot let that happen. Georgia has to establish the inside of this line of scrimmage because if you allow him to average almost 13 yards per carry up the middle, Arkansas is going to be able to put up points because that is just a disaster because once you start loading the middle – uh, Smith and those running backs are going to find room on the outside, and then you're going to be in real trouble. So locking up Jefferson is going to be of the most importance, and I'll talk about you know how they can do that in just a minute when we get up to, when we get to our matchups. But the offensive line for Arkansas, the last point here, is got to have their best game of the season. They have not seen a defensive line this talented over their first four games. They've played really well though, only three sacks allowed. 16 hurries and 24 pressures over the first four games. The offensive line must win the line of scrimmage battle Saturday. And if they don't, I think we could see a repeat of the Clemson game where Georgia absolutely shuts down this offense. They're going to have to win the line of scrimmage. I know Georgia has a lot of talent on the front of that, on the front end of that defense, but Arkansas relies on this run game. If the offensive line doesn't show up, the Razorbacks are in for a long day. Now, the matchup to watch for me is K.J. Jefferson and these running backs against this Georgia linebacking core. And it honestly might be the strength of the defense, but this matchup is going to determine whether the Razorbacks are going to have a real shot to escape Athens with a huge upset win. The Razorbacks are currently averaging over 260 yards per game and averaging almost six yards per carry for the entire team over the entire season with 11 rushing touchdowns. This is important because the three things I need to look for, if these three things happen, I think Arkansas could win this game. They have to win the time of possession battle. They have to avoid third and longs, and they cannot have any turnovers. Those are the top things to have happen for Arkansas if they want to escape Athens with the win because the time of possession battle 
one wears down this Georgia defense and keeps your defense fresh on the other side to make plays late. Of third and longs is where Georgia's going to eat you alive. They're going to bring the blitz. Their secondary is good enough on the back end to make plays, and you're going to put yourself in ridiculous situations and situations where that stadium's going to be going berserk, and you're not going to be able to succeed because if you keep yourself in third and twos, you can play to your strength and run the ball and be creative. Third and 15s, you're going to be in trouble against this Georgia defense. Now, the turnover battle, Georgia's too good. And, and this game is too important to lose the turnover battle. If you can play a clean game, you're going to have at least a shot this weekend to pull off a huge upset in Athens. Now, they have the, the number one thing there is they have to try to wear down this front seven because if they let Georgia get some quick three and outs, it's going to be a long day for the Razorbacks. Now, on the flip side, the Bulldogs got, you know, no pun intended, got some have some absolute – studs, dogs on in those in those linebacker spots. Those guys are going to be tasked with slowing down one of the best rushing attacks in the country. While also the number one thing I picked this matchup is these are the guys that are that are going to have to stop Jefferson from making plays outside the pocket. And they're going to have to get pressure on them. The Kobe Dean, Channing Tindall, both of which 33 tackles, three and a half sacks, they have to show all of their athleticism, their play recognition has to be on point, and just their overall playmaking ability this weekend is going to have to be there because, for me, they have not seen a quarterback that brings the type of skill set that Jefferson does this weekend. And also the edge guys, Nolan Smith and Adam Anderson, have to have major, major games this weekend. They got to get pressure off the edge in passing situations. They have to make it, they have to try to make Arkansas one dimensional and then get up after get get up the field and get after the quarterback. They've already combined for six sacks over the first few weeks of the season. Nolan Smith is the second highest graded uh pass rusher on this team, right behind the Kobe Dean, who has been an absolute phenom on the blitz, and he has been outstanding. Now For this matchup, if Jefferson and these running backs are able to get loose and establish the rushing attack, then this game gets real interesting in Athens. But if Dean and these linebackers slow this run game, get after Jefferson, and force Arkansas out of their comfort zone, I think this game could get out of hand. So given all that, you know, looking at this matchup, 11 a.m. really helps Arkansas. And really and truly, guys, I think this is the toughest test Georgia's had this season. I understand they played Clemson week one, but looking right now, I think Arkansas is a better team overall than Clemson is right this second. Say what you want about recruiting rankings, all that stuff. As a team executing, Arkansas is a better matchup for against Georgia than Clemson was as of right now. I think their offense is much better than what Clemson saw. I think their defense is extremely underrated. But overall, as a team, I think Arkansas is a bigger test right now for Georgia than even Clemson was. But for me, I trust JT Daniels to make the clutch throws just a little bit more than Jefferson. And I really like this Georgia defense. I have said in in multiple episodes, I think this is the best front seven in the country. I think they forced just one or two turnovers for the Razorbacks to really kind of get this game out of hand late. I do feel like Arkansas is going to keep it closer than people think. The 18 and a half point spread is really, it is, that's a lot of points, man. That is a lot of points. I don't think they necessarily cover that. So for me, I'm going to go with Georgia winning this game 30 to 17 over the Razorbacks. So it, it's a, it's a solid win. 13-point win for the Bulldogs in Athens. I think the early game really helps Arkansas keep it close. But for me, I just think Georgia's too good right now. And right now, just in my opinion, I think Georgia might be playing some of the best football in the country. I still think Arkansas is a legit team. I still think they possibly could be the second-best team in the SEC West. It's just right now, with the game being in Athens, with the way this Georgia defense is playing, with the way the offense is developing, I just think Georgia has too much depth and firepower for the Razorbacks this weekend. As much as I love this story, I picked the Razorbacks last week over AM, but I just can't ride with them this week. I have the Bulldogs 30, Razorbacks 17 this weekend in Athens. And guys, if you made it this far, hit the subscribe button, smash the like button on that video, and comment your score prediction below. If you pick the correct team and score, 
you win our $50 game of the week giveaway right here on the Blue Bloods. Shout out to y'all for supporting. We'll have another preview dropping this afternoon. Uh, Cincinnati, Notre Dame, another huge top 10 matchup. So make sure to tune in for that. But guys, for right now on the Blue Bloods, we are out.